As we know, postcard program has become very popular and is a very easy to use software when we want to train 3D Gaussian splatting models on our own computer. One of its best features, in my opinion, is the live preview viewport, where we can see in real time how the training process of the model is progressing and how all the individual splats are fighting their intended places. The live preview window smartly visualizes the Gaussian splatting algorithm and through it, it is fascinating to watch as the model becomes more and more accurate. However, this training process that we have been following so far is a rather choppy presentation and it progresses in slow pulses. But did you know that underneath these pulses lies a much more dynamic and fluid movement that reveals even more vividly how all these Gaussian and individual spots are formed during the training process. You can access this mode very easily. All you need to do is press the play button in the timeline controls while the training process is running. When the cue pointer runs on the timeline during the training process, it will update the viewport window much more frequently and with that the program will bring all these Gaussians to life. This way we can see how all the splat starts to wobble and move around much more dynamically. I'm not sure if this feature is intentionally built into the Boshad program, but I personally like this effect a lot and I think it is very interesting phenomena that brings out the beauty of the Gaussian splatting algorithm in a fascinating way. And when this feature is combined with a synthetically generated image data, even more interesting aspect will emerge. I call it the propagate effect. Hello everyone, it's Olli here again. So I wanted to show you this cool looking trick that I accidentally discovered while training a Gaussian spreading models in PoShot. Unfortunately this effect is only accessible through the live preview window and there is really no other way to save it than using a screen capture or screen recording methods. It would be great if the training process could be rendered in a video file but since this phenomena occurs in the calculation process itself, it is quite difficult to capture it in any other way than just recording the post-shot user interface window. Changing the background color from this solid gray would also help a lot and would make the visibility of the Gaussians better. But currently in the post-shot, the ground plane grid is the only element that separates the objects from the background in the viewport. And this grid is actually one interesting thing that can also be combined with this dynamic propagate effect. For example, if you want to examine a little more closely how the different profiles differ from each other, we can turn on the play button again and see how, for example, this synthetic car model is formed with the MCMC profile. Against the ground plane grid, we really can see how many hidden Gaussians there are buzzing and flying around the model. Here, the dynamic movement of the Gaussian reveals that MCMC method is actually splatting all the Gaussians from outside in, and this profile generates a large chaotic noise around the model. While the older ADC profile is building the model clearly from inside out. And this same thing happens also with the new Splat Tree profile, which is now included in the program on the Boshart latest versions. But the direction of the Gaussian propagation can be influenced in other ways too. For example, we can utilize various sparse point clouds that don't have to be related in any way to the actual object we are generating. This trick works best with synthetic material and which can be generated inside the Blender software 
using the camera array tool that I have developed. Here I have a 3D model of this girl character who is wearing a colorful jacket. I quickly create an array object around it and place the cameras on its surface pointing inwards. And using the EV engine I can quickly render images of this character from all these camera angles. And in addition to this I create also the camera data using the call map format. But when I start creating the point cloud, instead of creating points from this character, I create a small circular floor surface underneath it. And then on top of that I generate random points. And using these points I then save the sparse point cloud in a points 3D TXT format. And after this, when I drag all these datasets into the post shot, I can see that I don't have the actual character anywhere. The starting point is just this circular floor with the random points. And once again I press the play button from the timeline and start the training process. And I can now witness this interesting propagate effect that starts from the floor level and continues to grow upwards until the character is fully formed. So in this way it is possible to play and control a bit the propagate direction. Using a different source object for the sparse point cloud, it gives this effect sort of a growing platform where the algorithm can start building the Gaussians and propagate them further. But these points need to be in touch to each other. If there is too few points, or if in this case the floor level is too far from the feet of this character, nothing happens. So in order to get this propagate effect to work and grow further, the source point cloud and the actual Gaussian object needs to be very close together. And when I understood this, it inspired me to do different experiments and play with this fascinating effect. Where dynamic movement and Gaussian generating brought out this spectacular transitions that reminded me of a particle animation or other very visual and artistic ways of structuring 3D models. There is also this clear pulse-like movement in the propagation where all Gaussians jumps at the regular intervals as the development progresses. I think this is a very special feature and it's like the heartbeat of the algorithm. And it became very satisfying when I happened to find the right piano music for it. It was amazing to notice when these pulse jumps were synchronized to the correct beat of this piano piece. Well, what is your opinion about this Gaussian propagate effect? You can leave your comment below, and if you are interested about the camera array tool for Blender, I'll leave the links where you can find it in the description. I hope this video was inspirational and if you liked it, hit the like button. And of course, remember to subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, I will continue to explore these fascinating and artistic aspects of the Gaussian splatting worlds. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Dreaming.